I'm live in front of the Bell Center where hundreds of Habs fans lined up here today to pay their last respects to legendary hockey player Guy Lafleur. Lafleur passed away at age 70 after a battle with lung cancer. I'm joined by Matt Drake, editor for Habs Eyes on the Prize, to talk about the man that was Guy Lafleur. Of course, a state funeral coming up for Guy Lafleur. What did Guy mean to this city and mean to you? I mean, he meant everything to the city, as you can see, with the amount of people that lined up here just to pay their respects today. I think the, the best example you can possibly think of is in, uh, what, 1981, I think he came back as a member of the New York Rangers uh, after coming out of retirement, and he got a standing ovation after scoring two goals against the Montreal Canadiens. So uh, that tells you all you need to know about how he was revered in this city and still remains revered in this city. Uh, as for me, I, I never got the pleasure of watching him play, but I grew up on and became a Habs fan through the stories that my father told me about watching Guy Lafleur. So he transcended generations of hockey fans to the point where a lot of us became Habs fans as a result of just being told stories, word of mouth about the things that he did uh, for this team and for this league. So I mean, for, for, for me, I, again, I never even saw him play, but it was an incredibly sad day when I heard about it. And um, you know, much respect to Guy Lafleur and everything he brought to this city. Absolutely. What would you say is your best memories of seeing footage of him playing, the sort of highlights that you saw of his career? I think what comes to mind, number one, is first that, that one game where he came back uh, as, as a member of the New York Rangers. But really, if you, if you take into account those four straight Stanley Cups at the end of the 70s, I, I think the league would be a very different league right now if those teams didn't happen. If the bigger, more physical, uh, you know, fighting teams like the Flyers and the Bruins owned that decade the way the Habs did, I really don't think we'd have as much of a speed and, and skilled league that, that we have right now. Uh, the, the league could have been set back many years. I think Dick Irvin Jr. said it best when he was talking about those teams that we could have gone back to the dark ages without those teams and Guy Lafleur was the star of those teams so without that run that they went on I mean again we might not have the same NHL that we have right now so uh, I think everybody owes him a debt of gratitude uh, not just us as Habs fans. Mm. And of course having a state funeral having this memorial with hundreds of people lining up just to pay their last respects he was obviously adored throughout the city. Um, why was he so adored. What are the sort of things that you've heard from Habs fans. I think just the memories of him, you know, flying around the ice with uh, with no bucket, just letting his blonde hair flow in the wind. He changed the game in terms of w with his speed. He became that that became the type of player that you were really looking for, right? That fast player and being a Quebecois legend as well. So being you know a local player to here, it, it made that much of a difference to have a star who uh, still to this day is the leading scorer in the history of the Montreal Canadiens to be from here as well I think a lot of people were able to relate to him uh, I think he was a guy who did things his own way as well he didn't you know he, mar he didn't march to the beat of anybody else's drum and I think as a result he really endeared himself to everybody in the province of Quebec uh, particularly in the city of Montreal and uh, nobody's ever going to forget him and there there's probably never going to be another Guy Lafleur. Mm. And of course, um, he got a, a 10 minute standing ovation at uh, the last home game over here, the before last home game. And of course, um, I'm sure Habs players were extremely touched um, to see uh, the incredible um, tribute that was, you know, for Guy Lafleur. What do you think was going on inside of their minds, inside of the players' minds, those who were not raised in Quebec or understand, you know, what, what this city is about? Well, you, you heard a lot of them talk about it, and he was an ambassador for this team, and it wasn't just a role that, like, a, an empty title that they gave him. He was a legitimate ambassador for this team. He made himself available to players constantly. You know, he would meet with players that are on the team now, so I think even if they weren't born here, even if they didn't grow up on those same stories that I grew up on, even if they never watched him play, I think they knew who he was, and they knew what he meant to this city, and uh, they had the opportunity to see that just by talking to him a little bit, and by, you know, coming to a game. To this day, I mean, I remember two years ago, I was at a game where he came out and just waved to the crowd and he got a standing ovation and everybody's chanting his name as well. So any of the players who are on this team now, they knew what he meant to the city. So I think, you know, when you talk about that final home game, when that 10th goal went in and they heard the Guy chants going through the Bell Center, I think they knew right there and then how important he was uh, if they didn't already. Absolutely. And of course, people are going to be able to pay their last respects as well tomorrow before the state funeral that's going to be on Tuesday. And don't forget, there's going to be live coverage of the Guy Lafleur state funeral. It begins at 1030 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, May 3rd on Sportsnet and live streaming on Sportsnet Now. In Montreal, Brittany Enriquez, City News.